time of the month again. It's the bonus show with Mommy and Mo. The best bonus show, period. I'm your host, Mercy. And boys, it's probably time to change the channel. Okay, here we are, Mercy. Hi. We got another episode. Are you excited? Mm hmm. You've been asking to do this for a while. No, I haven't. We brought this up this morning. You asked before. No, I didn't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it took us a while to think about what we wanted to do this episode on. This is exaggerating. We thought this up this morning. <laughs> you're really, uh, you're really angsty and You're really lying. <laughs> Okay, uh, rough start. Is this going to be just an entire episode of a teenager and their mom in the... I mean, this whole episode is about my negativity, so yeah. Oh, fair enough. All right, so here's the topic of today's episode is Mercy's unpopular opinions. Because would it be fair to say that you have a lot of opinions? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I would even dare to step out on a limb and say that these opinions are only increasing as you enter your teen years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I don't understand, but it's okay. Would you say that you have more opinions now at 13 than maybe you did when you were 10? Yes. Okay, fair enough. All right, so we kind of thought through these this morning. Good job. Fair enough. <laughs> and... We had a few different categories of things that you definitely hold opinions that may not be shared by the greater population. I'm not saying nobody shares them. I'm just saying... Unpopular. Unpopular. Exactly. Like my entire middle school career. So, let's start with... Well... Let's start with the more obvious. The topic that came to mind when we first said Mercy's unpopular opinion, which would be food. Food. You, my dear. I am a particular eater. (laughs) Yes. I have some opinions on food that other people might not share with me. But if you put some foods in front of me, I will say, no, thank you. Oh, well, at least you're polite about it. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they make me eat it. And I'll run to my room and start crying. Oh, okay. Aww. So tell me this, Mercy. How do you feel about sandwiches? Because, hold on. Let's just acknowledge the fact that sandwiches are really the easiest school lunch option that exists. And that's why I owe like $30 in my lunch account. <laughs> <laughs> but not an option in the Needham house. So tell me. What's the deal with sandwiches? Well, you see, they are disgusting. And you may not agree with me, but you're wrong. Because (laughs) sandwiches, the combination of that yucky bread with anything you put in the sandwiches, it's all just so gross and I don't understand it. Roast beef sandwiches on, like, not regular bread, those are yummy. But everything else is pretty gross. Okay, wait, define not regular bread. Like... You know, like those loaves of bread that you like buy at the store, those are disgusting on sandwiches, unless they're toasted. But if you buy like, like special kinds of rolls or like Hawaiian bread, that stuff's good. Okay, but you realize that this, the same ingredients are going into all of these things. They're just presented in a different form. Presentation is everything, mother. (laughs) (laughs) All right, just... I'm just making sure. You also have a, this would be a fairly unpopular decision in our region because, Mercy, you are a born and raised New England gal. So tell me, what's the deal with your hatred of chowder? Um, Clam chowder and corn chowder are disgusting. And you cannot change my mind because it's just straight facts. I do not, I do not like them. And, um, clam chowder, so corn chowder, I find a lot more gross. Like, it's just so weird flavor. Clam chowder just kind of, like, makes me sick. Like, it's just not very good. Yeah. Thanks. That's all I have to say. (laughs) 
<laughs> so despite the fact that we have done everything in our power to make you a true New Englander, you still refuse to eat the chowder. Yeah. Not, not cool. Okay. Just so we're clear. Okay. <laughs> All right. This last one, I can't even speak it out loud because it's not I'll only... I'll do it. <laughs> Okay, kids, so you may not know this, but my mommy works at Chick-fil-A in Westboro, Massachusetts. Come give her a hello. But one thing that has to do with my childhood is that we eat Chick-fil-A a lot, a lot, a lot. But I will not eat Chick-fil-A chicken. Eat more cow, kiddos. <laughs> I don't like Chick-fil-A chicken. Why? Who knows? It started in Florida. The year was 2014. Chick-fil-A chicken made me sick to my tum-tum, and now I don't like it. Okay, I want to clarify this story because you're not telling the whole story. I don't remember the whole story. I was like six. The story is that you were sick already, and I made the mistake of going to Chick-fil-A. So it's your fault. Okay. And you got chicken nuggets... And then continued to be sick. That's when it kind of, without getting into gross detail, the sickness became more evident within the um, hours that followed. And you have always attached Chick-fil-A to your stomach virus, even though the two have nothing to do with each other. What do you think about Gatorade, Mom? G oh, okay. Touche. <laughs> That's how I feel about uh, ginger ale. Because when I was a kid and you got the stomach bug, they always gave you ginger ale and saltines. So when I smell ginger ale, it makes me think of I the love stomach bug. Ginger ale. No, see, it's gross. But <laughs> listen, Mercy, I will give ginger ale a try. If you would I just have, I have tried Chick-fil-A chicken before. I get it in the soup and I don't like it. I pick it out. That's so weird. I'm gonna get fired after this, just so you know. Okay. Okay, and just so you know also, that is a very unpopular. Mm -hmm. unpopular opinion which is why it fits into this episode okay moving along television the girl you like you like your tv shows i like netflix but you have some pretty odd uh interests a variety a variety for sure and you are can be difficult to watch television with <laughs> because of the things that you decide you like or do not like. Mm -hmm. So... Do you want me to tell them what I like? Yeah, tell us. Okay, so you see, my my TV, there's like different ends of my TV. So, you know, you have like the lower childish end, and then you have the slightly more mature end, and in the middle is just Disney Channel. So I like to watch a lot of the <laughs> Disney Channel. But my two favorites are the ones on the end. Barbie Life in the Dream House and The Office. So um, anybody listening that has any connection to those shows professionally, we need a crossover episode between Barbie Life in the Dream House and The Office, please and thank you. What? Uh, <laughs> sorry. What exactly would that look like? Well, you kind of have to like two crossover episodes. One is on one show, then the other one's on the other show. So first... Michael Michael Scott comes down and is part of Barbie Life in the Dream House, you know? And what like, part? I'm sorry. I really, I'm quite curious. What part, I don't write the show. I just watch it, Mom. What part would he play in Barbie Life in the Dream House? <laughs> Michael Scott, of course. Oh. He'd show up and he'd be like, oh no, I'm lost in Malibu. And then, because that's how all the crossover episodes work. You get lost somewhere. And then Barbie's like, you can come stay with us. And then all of her sisters have fun with Michael Scott and then, like, go to the mall and they go to the beach. And then Michael Scott's like, I'm heading back to Scranton. Do you guys want to come with me? And then Barbie's like, this is going to be so fun. And then <laughs> takes all of her sisters and all of her friends down to Scranton. And um, they, all, they all have so much fun at the office that they get hired there permanently. Oh. And then it becomes a crossover lifestyle. So then the office episode would be the return to the office? Yeah. Okay. Would this be in cartoon format or like reality TV? So the Barbie part, it's Michael Scott from a green screen. He's the real life person and everything else is cartoon. And then they go to Scranton and it's just Barbie and her sister's cartoon in the, in the office. I would, I'm not going to lie. You've convinced me. I think there should be a crossover episode. We mm -hmm. should get on that. Okay. Okay, I don't want to jump out of this into is is that where you stand on television? Basically, Barbie 
life in the dream house in the office. <laughs> I, um, I don't even know what that means. Um, yes. Yeah. So I will say the office, that's a pretty popular opinion because I still think that's one of the greatest shows that I've ever played on television. Barbie, ha- Barbie, Barbie house, house, Barbie life in the dream house. I gonna we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that one. That I can't even sit and watch an episode of it. It's a little ridiculous. I watch the entire season every single day of my life. Oh, okay. Well, that's a discussion of oh, my poor parenting for I have another, another day. I have another request for Netflix. Oh yes, please. Netflix, you've been adding seasons to the other Barbie show. You need to add seasons to Barbie Life in the Dream House, the original OG Barbie show, because that's the good one. Stop adding like five seasons to the other one because it's not as interesting what is the other one there's more than one Barbie. there's show. two different barbie shows and one of them's really lame and then the one that i like is really cool but they don't add any seasons to it <laughs> you need to come out with more episodes i need more content okay i've just been watching the one season over and over again well i'm sure that netflix listens to this podcast so i'm sure it'll be taken care of immediately <laughs> all right there is one more okay one more unpopular opinion that you hold in regards to the uh we'll call it the entertainment industry would you like to share that oh yeah what the entertainment industry oh i understand um so you see kids you might have heard of the andy needham band among my favorite bands but the issue is in january of 2015 they broke up. Aww. Why? We won't really go into that. There's lots of tea on the topic. <laughs> There's what? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. But you see, the Andy Nita <laughs> band breakup. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm focused. The Andy Nita band breakup was a very good thing for me because as a 11-year-old girl... I was missing a father figure in my life. <laughs> Sorry. And my dad funny. was in a band, so we couldn't afford therapy. But now, my mom has a real job. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still focused. My mom has a real job, and I can afford to tell somebody all of the problems regarding my lack of father in my childhood. Therefore, I was happy when the Andy Needham band broke up. Thank you. Unpopular opinions with Mercy. <laughs> so, I can't even. So basically, your unpopular opinion is you are glad they broke up because you got your dad back. Back? <laughs> you got him in the first place, Mom. <laughs> okay. Uh, we may need to find more therapy, apparently. Not All right. Therapy. Mercy, I just want you to know that despite all of your unpopular opinions, I still love you. And I think you're the best. <laughs> Even when you make really random noises <laughs> and faces at me when we're recording a podcast. <laughs> Is there anything else before we wrap this up? That you need your listeners to know about your unpopular or popular opinions. Mm -hmm. I need you guys to tell potatoes that they need to sponsor me. If you have a potato in your in your if you have English, anyways. If you have a potato in your house, I need you to tell that potato to talk to everyone it knows and get me a sponsorship from potatoes so I get free potatoes for life. All right. That is, I would say that that's probably one of the strongest opinions that you hold is that potatoes are a staple in everyone's diet. Can we have potatoes for dinner? (laughs) Yes, Mercy. We can maybe possibly have potatoes for dinner. Dad. Thanks for tuning in. Dad. To this episode. Dad. Mercy's unpopular opinions. potatoes. On the bonus then show I told Dad I want the with Mom and Mo. Okay, bye. All right, Mercy. So we're doing a sound check. Okay. I want to make sure this 
using one microphone for both of us works. Got it. Both for sound purposes and also personal space. Oh, okay. You might need to come a little closer. You seem far away. No. But what if we can't hear you? Then you're going to need to get two microphones. This is your show. Um, yeah, and I should have the microphone to myself. <laughs> wow. There's a... Just saying. 